Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about Circle and me and uh, what we do. I am myself a dad for surrogacy. I have a 16-year-old uh, son and one who will be 15 this summer. We are, um, you know, in now in 44 different countries. Ireland is actually one of the ones we've been doing longest, but you know, it's a few people here and there occasionally. And there are really two forms of gestational surrogacy. One between a husband and wife where they are young enough and capable enough of producing the egg and the sperm, fertilizing that embryo in a petri dish in an IVF process, and then implanting it into the surrogate. The other we call egg donor surrogacy, where the woman is either not young enough or she has had cervical or ovarian cancer where the uter ovaries have been removed or any of a number of other reasons, um, Asherman syndrome, um, uh, diabetes, or what, born without a uterus, um, and they need to have both an egg donor and a gestational carrier. In either event, um, it is still considered a very um, clear-cut case in the United States, in the states where surrogacy is legal, and really that's 44 of the 50 states, um, that that <coughs> case is one in which the woman is not genetically related to the child. And because the courts in America say that if a woman is genetically related to a child, she has a period of time after the child is born to change her mind. Um, and it's anywhere from one to ten days as you travel from state to state. You can't have a contract when it's traditional surrogacy, or when it's just inseminated and carries her own child to term and then relinquishes it to you. That's something that's against the law in the United States. When a woman is carrying a child to term that is not hers genetically, there's no set of laws in the United States that bans that. And so you can have a contract that is valid and binding, that binds the woman from the moment you sign it to whatever you agree to. And if you agree that you're going to be the parents, whether the wife of the couple is genetically related to the child, that makes no difference. The surrogate is bound to that contract because she's not genetically related to the child. So they enforce what's called the intent of the parties, which is standard contract law, and you're safe in the United States because of that fact. We have a 99.6% success rate. I've literally only had two couples who came in the door uh, for a baby, walk out the door without a baby, and it was in both instances of their own accord. We really are very selective about the clinics that we work with. We try to work with only the top doctors who have the top success rates. And even within that, we have a huge range of costs that we can keep control over. We can talk about the different options that are available by choosing a less expensive clinic. Time. What does it take? How long does it take? Um, I've had a baby in my program at eight and a half months after the couple joined us, <laughs> which was quite extraordinary because the surrogate was cycling, they had frozen embryos, and that's how long it takes. Most people, it's between a year and two. Very honestly, we like to tell people from abroad 15 to 18 months. Um, it tends to be a little longer for gay couples. Um, it usually takes a little bit longer to find them a gestational carrier, um, but not tremendously. Um, we've certainly had plenty of heterosexual couples from abroad have a baby in a year. Um, but I would like to say 15 to 18 months is standard. Depends as well on the number of tries it takes to do that. Um, the, um, the process is really one in which the first step in the process would be if you need a donor to find your donor. The second step in the process, if that donor is not specifically connected to a fertility center, to find a fertility center close to her, one that we recommend. The third step in the process is to find a carrier. Most of our donors, 95% of them, are available to be known if you want that. Um, and I strongly recommend it from my personal experience. Certainly not something I mandate on anyone, but I do find that it helps psychologically the children and medically the children. That's a very important piece of the puzzle. Um, and generally speaking, that's not available around Europe. I've had a whole 
uh, lectures that I've given and other lawyers in America have given about the difference between a determinative and a paternalistic system. And the paternalistic system that existed then in the UK was basically, you didn't even get to pick out your donor, we're going to pick it for you because you should be lucky to have a donor. And the American system was like, wait, you have to determine your own rights. Yeah, you have to pay a little for it. But <laughs> you get to pick who you want and you get to decide whether you know her and you get all these choices. So. You have to decide what feels best for you. We just give you information. We also try to um, work with you to have a lasting relationship with your carrier. It's very important for us that even if you don't know your donor, you must meet your carrier. First of all, we want you to go to her home, see where she lives. These are not women who live at below the poverty line. Not one of them in our program will ever be like that. These are people, I just had one who passed our program, family income of $150,000. Very, very well off. She's actually a Carnegie Mellon graduate, um, and she's gone on to law school, and she's had two children of her own, and she wants to be a carrier for someone. Um, and so it isn't your typical uh, family situation that you might expect but also getting to talk to them, meeting their husbands, going to the hospital where they'll deliver and getting to know the staff there, meeting the obstetrician so you can feel comfortable because you're sitting in this room going, what? I'm going to go 3,000 miles away to do the most intimate thing I can do with any human being, with someone who's a total stranger from another country? Now imagine doing that if you only speak French. <laughs> I can't tell you, or you're from Afghanistan or you're the first gay couple from Chile to have children in Colorado, or anything like that. We are literally doing this all over the world, and what is amazing is the friendships we're developing. I met my surrogate 18 years ago, ne never encountered her before in my life, and I now consider her one of the most important people in my life. Elliot met someone who he talks to every single day, and others, it's once every few years. But it is a friendship and a connection that is extraordinary and trust will build. And generally speaking, when I first come to a country to do a seminar like this, I do something along this lines. But a year later or so, we'll come back with a surrogate and a couple, and we'll really talk to you from a very different perspective, because I think that's what most people fear, is that these are all women doing this for the money, and there's not a one in our program for whom that is the principal object. Most of them won't even ask about the money, or they'll say, well, I just want to stay home with my kids. My husband's pushing me to go back to work, and I don't want to. I want to stay home with my kids. But my husband cares about the money. So um, I think it's really, the last thing I would say about Circle that I think is really wonderful is that we um, really have everyone in our program. So employed by me are parents through surrogacy, surrogates through surrogacy, donors through surrogacy, as well as lawyers, social workers, marketing professionals, and everything else in the book. So there's literally someone who can tell you about their personal experience at every turn in the process. And we really try to make this as comfortable for you as we possibly can. And so far, no one has ever returned to Ireland with any problems at all. And that goes for every single country in the world except for one couple who didn't listen to me and went to the French consulate before they returned to France. And that child has an American passport and not a French passport because his father's American and they knew about surrogacy and now we're fixing it. But everybody else has listened to me. And in Ireland, it's a little bit different. You can actually go to the consulate, the Irish consulate. Um, it's just we have to walk you through it carefully and which consulates and things in this nature. But in general, everyone, everyone else has returned home with no legal problems. I am very proud to say I have never been sued. No one's ever said to me I've kept a penny theirs improperly. And I've never had anyone have any trouble returning to their home country. And we've done 44 countries.